How's it going YouTube comments in today with another video and today guys with the video is going to be a full meta breakdown post Sayak. I do hope that you enjoyed today's video. Today we're going to be covering a lot of the different decks that you can expect to play against the next format and their end boards, their deck list, different tech cards that they're playing, and then the overall objective of each deck. Today we're also going to be talking about different decks that I don't think they'll end up surviving a potential ban list. So if you haven't already checked out my sponsors over in Imperium Duelist, Dragon Shield, or Gem, definitely go ahead and do so all down in the description below. And if you haven't already heard, we're on our way to 20,000 subscribers i'm definitely ready to get there because once we do i'm going to be doing a massive giveaway and so i always wanted this channel to be something that people could go to at the end of the day whenever it was like really crazy and you didn't get enough time to play Yu Gi Oh, to just have a little video that you can reflect on and really be able to gain as much knowledge as possible because i get it i even work myself like 50 hours a week it gets pretty tough and then Yu Gi Oh sometimes goes on the back burner but these videos at least for me they're really important for me to just share as much as I can because I know back when I was trying to learn how to play the game or back when I was trying to like learn how to do anything in a meta that I really needed something to find something to research like different games to play but it's all right here for you and I do hope that you enjoy this video because these videos honestly are very special to me I really like making them and uh, just the ability to be able to expend that knowledge is just fantastic so Thank you for letting me do what I do. Honestly, I would not be here without any of you, so I really do appreciate it. And without further ado, let's hop right on into our first topic here. So the first thing that I want to talk about today is going to be Sprite. Now, can Sprite keep up with the meta? And that's a really good question because of the fact that we do have a ban list still. So that means that we're going to see cards like Sprite, Runic, Kashtira, Naturia, all up in the chopping block. And that's really going to matter here because if Sprite or Runic cards get hit in any fashion, I think that the deck itself on a standalone isn't really going to hold up to all the things that we're getting now but i do think as an engine that sprite is still very good because if you look at like monodome sprite or if we're even talking about the apple dragon pile it's still very good as an engine but if we do see sprite or runic cards get hit in any sort of fashion i do think that sprite becomes definitely not as good i've been saying this since the start of the format that we're just playing with tier two decks right now and so the newer decks that we're going to get are actually just a lot better inherently and i really like that about next format the next format actually just feels really fresh too i'm very excited to play um, but overall, I don't really think that Sprite can keep up. But again, we are talking about all four of these decks right now as being on the chopping block. So with that being said, I'm not going to include them in today's video. But just know that they are still potentially very strong to the next format, dependent on the ban list. But what I do want to talk about is going to be a Sayak template that I have for you. And this is going to be really important for deck building. Because I feel like all these hand traps and staple cards are going to be really important next format. So talk about Droll and Ogre. I think Droll is overall a very good card. It's just really insane. It's very potent. It just ends turns. Ogre, though, that card is going to be really crazy for very specific situations. And if you want to know what those situations are, definitely go ahead and check out my Where to Hand Trap video. That's the previous video to this one. So that has a lot of individual matchups, too, that you can see very specific interactions. But I do like the fact that it's an amazing spot removal, and it's going to be very helpful next format. Gamma is also going to be really strong because Droll. So if you have a deck that does search a lot and you have the opportunity to Gamma, you probably should be on Gamma, whether or not it's in your main or your side. That's another thing about playing cards like Prosperity. I still really like Prosperity, and in a Droll format, if you are in Prosperity, I do feel like you should be on Gamma as well. And then Gamma is even more free this format because you can go a cell into Baron as well. So it's very similar to like when we used to do like Chaotic Relay, but now you can go into Baron, which is really cool so highly recommend playing all those cards including dark ruler super heavy saber i can't answer dark ruler and there's a lot of very monster heavy boards that are going to be up this format so definitely consider playing dark ruler uh the other thing too is the best five decks of the format next format at least in my opinion until we see a ban list is going to be despia monodome super heavy samurai purely and math mech i think math mech alone is going to be really solid too and we'll talk about why that is so as for the card in the side that's performer pal 5 rainbow magician and this card is actually really crazy so if it's in your graveyard and a spell or trap gets set to your field you can go ahead and activate this back into your pendulum zone which is already insane and then if you don't control a set spell or trap you cannot activate monster effects on field nor attack so it's basically mystic mind versus super heavy samurai and this is going to be something that mirrors zombie world back when we used to play this against fluanderies because that matchup was really popular and really good so that's the same thing where super heavy samurai is going to be very popular and very good so you might want to consider playing five rainbow in your sideboard because the second you activate it even if you're going second against the deck they just auto lose the only answer that they have to this card is going to be either chaining saratobi or having arch phoenix centric and if they go second 
then obviously they don't have the answer of Saratobi, but if they go first, then they can always set up that so they have a quick effect MST. But it's also only if they respect this card. So at the first event, this is legal. This card is going to win a lot of games. As for your typical Super Heavy Samurai end board, you're going to have Oppo for three, Baron, Sargus, and Regulus. Regulus is going to be able to Omni negate an effect. Baron is just an Omni negation, and then you have Oppo for three. Be careful with Oppo though, because if you are committing to it, then just know that you get blown out by an ogre. Because again, if your Oppo uses the effect to negate and then you chain ogre, then it won't be able to lose attack and then the effect that it tried to negate won't be negated. So definitely really scary there, but that's why we have Baron and Regulus because they're probably not playing through all this unless they have Dark Ruler. Um, the other thing too, is you want to ogre on the monk warrior here, make sure that you do that and not the prodigy because getting this back into scale is really awkward since most lists only play two. So the less monk warriors that you have, the worse things get, especially because you can't pendulum some of this since it's an eight. So it's definitely even more awkward in that regard. Um, the end board is pretty strong though, but dark ruler is lights out. The other thing is just, you really want to make sure that you're looking out for hand traps as well, because even if you dark ruler the board, you got to know that there's a lot of hand traps in the main deck. So other things you got to be considerate of. If there's only one monster left on someone's board, please make sure that you don't clear that last monster until you're ready to go for the OTK or you're ready to like pass turn because you're going to get punished by gamma real hard. Um, that's huge. But so looking at a standard list here again, we're going to see Ash, Droll, Valor, Mourner, Ogre, Nibiru, Gamma. It's just a lot. Typically only one of the Soul Peacemaker. This card's really good. Uh, it's just the e telly from the deck if you go ahead and tribute off one of your other Super Heavy Samurais as well. Um, you have the Spy, which can go ahead and steal a Spell or Trap from your opponent's graveyard and then use it, and then it gets banished when it leaves the board. So this is like the cool way to get around the fact that you can't use Spells and Traps. And then if there's like a Talent in your opponent's graveyard, then it's just free value. Um, but overall, you'll usually end up seeing a Kaiju in the list too, just because it's going to be another one of those free value things that you can search off of like Genius. Um, the overall goal of the deck, obviously, is just to put up a ton of negation. But if you do get impermed, ogre, drolled, ash, if you get interrupted like twice, then your end board is a lot more minimal. Sometimes you literally just have like scales, a baron, and a hand trap. Which honestly, if your opponent already hit you with two hand traps and they only have four cards and you have a hand trap and baron, there's probably not a whole lot that they're actually even able to do. So definitely really cool to keep in mind. And then again, always having the opportunity to pendulum summon is going to be huge as well. Um, in the sideboard, this is Mechanical Hound. It's just another way to out the pendulum scale that goes ahead and just mystic minds you. Uh, so again, it really depends on how much you respect that card. Uh, in the extra deck though, you have the Acel and you have Stardust. It's really important to know that if you summon a cell and you summon one back and then your opponent has Nibiru, you can chain a cell, go into Stardust, and then use Stardust in level two on the same chain link to go into Baron. So when the Nibiru resolves, it'll only tribute off anything else that's on the board and then the Baron's unaffected until the end of the turn, uh, which is really cool. And another reason why you really should be on Stardust in your extra deck if you are playing a cell is just the ultimate way to play around Nibiru. Uh, it's a really crazy card. I like a sell a lot. I think it's like $40 right now. Definitely make sure that you pick up a copy. It's a really good card. If you are trying to summon Baguska against Super Heavy Samurai, I would highly recommend that you don't. Uh, there are a lot of ways that you can play around it, especially going into Saratobi and just swinging over it. Um, that's been a really good way to out it, uh, but just something to consider. Uh, overall, though, you have Ballista that allows you to net a lot of advantage. You have the Link 1 that can go ahead and reborn from the graveyard. Just a lot of cool ways you can go ahead and extend. Typically, if your opponent summons like Wagon and they use Wagon Effect to put itself in defense, this is also somewhere where you might consider using Ogre. If your opponent has a Soul Piercer in hand, they can actually just attach it to the Wagon after they search and then get rid of it. So then they're getting another search on top of that as well. And then they'll go into the Link 1 and then the Link 1 can reborn the uh, Soul Piercer. And then also what's really cool too is that if you Ogre the Link 1, then it doesn't summon because it has to summon to a zone that it points to. So as you can see, Ogre in this matchup is very versatile. I still recommend hitting the Monk Warrior. Just a couple different ways you can actually really interact with your opponent in simplified game states where maybe you're on a top deck situation um but any of those spots is actually just like really solid for ogre um but looking more so toward monodome 
Um, typically, you're going to end with two level 10 synchros. They'll vary on which one you really want to end with. About two cards in hand, the counter trap, which if you control a synchro, you negate the effect. And then if you have a 1500, 2100, or a Vasas on your field or in your grave, you can also destroy it. And then you can banish this from your graveyard and recycle through monodomes. So definitely a very good card, very searchable through the engine. And then an oppo for three. Oppo is very common in a lot of these combo decks right now. I don't really think that monodome is that good. I don't think that it realistically does more than playing against like Sword Soul. But I do like this deck a lot. I think that there's a lot that it can offer as far as different ways to play the deck. You can do the Prisma line. You have spots for utility. Uh, it's just overall a really refreshing deck to play. It's really fun. Um, I think at the end of the day, fun doesn't win all the time, but it's definitely something that I'm interested in playing, um, even if it's just at a local level. I've done just about 40-ish hours of testing already into the new format, and so far Monodome isn't looking as impressive, but it's something that I definitely will still own because it's pretty fun and it still can be pretty explosive. This is definitely a deck that you might want to use Spear Mode for because of the fact that there is a counter trap there, so it's a little bit more awkward to use cards like Dark Ruler, but that's something to just consider. Uh, overall, the hand trap lineup in this, again, Ash, Droll, Ogre, Imperm. Ash is very questionable, this format, as if you really want to run it. Branded's still going to be around, so you can always side it. It's not really important enough to run, I don't think. You can definitely play, like, Valor over Ash, but at the same point, I think Ash is just very generically good against so many matchups, so it's kind of hard to not run, but we've definitely done it before, so... Definitely take that as you will, and it really does depend on how hard a runic gets hit too, so we'll have to see. Um, this is my take on Monodome, so I cut it here list, playing the three meek, and I'm just trying to go for a very mid-range combo with a lot of utility. Um, so again, playing a lot of hand traps, playing talents, tasking, and prosperity, so just a lot of ways you can go ahead and play through a board, set up your own board, and be very consistent about it. Um, this is where you definitely want to go ahead and play that scale if you're really thinking that you're going to play against a lot of super heavy samurai. Um, the sideboard so far has been pretty clean as far as playing Herald of the Abyss. This is the card that I talked about like eight videos ago, but still really relevant in this format. Very good. Um, and the extra deck cards like Crimson Blader is kind of copium, but it's also pretty good against a lot of matchups next format. Um, the extra deck is really just not as tight as other decks, so you can always play cards like Goddess, Chaos Angel, just other cards that are just generically very good in utility. Um, I think playing the Goddess is also just very good against things like Purely too. Um, but it is kind of hard to summon when your opponent does have all of the spinbacks too. But you got to put your opponent on better have cards like Goddess in your deck, right? That's why I like the Vicious Estrada though, because it helps you break a board since it pops and then gains attack. And it just overall does so much for you. Um, then getting the free Reborn off Cross Sheep, it's very nice too. Um, the deck does get hurt if you ogre its normal summon when they use effect. So if they go normal summon the Reem Heart effect and you ogre, it's pretty much over at that point. Uh, it, it's really interesting. Ogre is actually very good this format. Um, Droll does hurt this deck quite a lot too, uh, because they still want to be able to get to their other field spell, get to the arrival. So moving forward off of that though, we have a typical math mech end board. And again, this isn't really elevated as much, but playing the Sinet Conflict is definitely cool. So you'll have the Heat Soul with the Conflict now, and then Super Factorial and about three cards in hand. And again, you play a ton of hand traps. So definitely going to be a pretty crazy board to try to play through. We already know that the trap is insane. Uh, being able to just essentially trishula your opponent with an Omni Negate is pretty nice. Uh, looking at a list for this, we do have the new Firewall cards. Uh, this one right here is Phantom, and I believe this one's Defensor. Phantom allows you to be able to search the conflict, which is really cool. And then the Defensor is a one-card combo. This is very similar to other engines we've seen, like Cyrus Gadget. Um, obviously, no Link Devotee in the extra deck or anything like that, but definitely a really cool way to go ahead and net a lot of free advantage without even really expending too many cards out of your hand. Um, the deck hasn't really changed a whole lot. You're playing a little less utility. You're still an Ash, Droll, Valor, Ogre, which is really nice and you still have like the small world option and santa claus so the deck overall is very clean but i do recommend that if you are going to play this to just make sure that if you can find room for gamma maybe you find room for gamma i tried but i couldn't really um at least side gamma it's very good the other thing too is i always see people on one laplation i believe playing two is just optimal because especially if you're going second there's a lot of opportunities to go for laplation and then you can go ahead and set up super factorial for like the follow-up turn after you break the board if you're not able to just kill because at that point your opponent's already dwindled on resources and playing through a super factorial just is not optimal 
Uh, but overall, this is still just the access code deck. They're going to go for the trap turn one, and then turn two, they're going to go for access code. Or if they have to go second, then they're just going to go for access code and try to hand trap you to stop playing and then just go for the OTK line. Um, so definitely be aware of that. Definitely a very good deck next format too. So the next thing that I want to talk about is going to be purely. So the typical end board for purely is going to vary, but this is going to be the most typical. It's going to be using the plump to attach two more materials. So you have four, then you have the trap card, and then usually about two or three cards in hand. So in your opponent's standby phase, you'll go ahead and draw two because you'll have two sleeping memory on your plump. And then you'll rank up your plump into noir and then in the standby phase you'll use noir effect to go ahead and draw two more so in your opponent's standby phase you're usually drawing four drawing six is like super greedy and rarely happens but drawing four is very optimal especially because you play a lot of hand traps so not a whole lot that your opponent's actually even able to do through that which is really nice uh, and then you have Noor, so that's just a Towers on board. This is another reason why you really want to make sure that you have the Herald of the Abyss, because if you Herald the Abyss, they're Towers. The Field Spell and the Continuous won't get their effects since the player is sending the card and not your opponent sending the card. Looking at a list for this, though, the Rainbow Bridge of Salvation, this card's really good, and you play the Cobalt Eagle because you can Normal Summon it and use the effect to put it back in the deck if you do open it, since the Normal Summon in this deck doesn't really matter. Playing the two Lily isn't super standard, three is still very standard, but playing two is fine. I didn't really miss the third one ever. Playing the one Tactics and the two Thrust, I like this card a lot, especially because in the sideboard you can play Where Art Thou, and then you can go into cards like your five Rainbow Magician, or you can go into Current Card to help break a board. So that's already amazing value in this deck and really does help you beat decks like Super Heavy Samurai. Um, also, you side the Secret Village for the Salvation as well, just so you have another way to go first and have a really solid end board. The two Noir um, card's very good. If your opponent draws in the standby phase with Noir, though, you can go ahead and drop Kurakara on it. So that's another reason why I think that Kurakara is going to be an amazing card next format. It's very good. The other thing is that we're playing Moon because Moon is actually a Diamond Dire Wolf under Skill Drain because it contributed itself. So that's something that's very useful. Otherwise, you can play Donner, but I think that since we're able to play Moon in this deck, you definitely should just play Moon over Donner. Um, it's very solid. When you go for the Secret Village line, by the way, you want to make sure that you're summoning out the Slacker Magician. I do think that playing the Secret Village is really important because it shuts down a lot of options for your opponent, right? They don't get to use Tasking, Tactics, Herald. It really does put them on you better have a Kaiju for the Noir or else it's going to be a really awkward turn for you. If you feel like your opponent has Kurakara, wait till they commit to the board a bit and then use Noir like three times and just spin everything at once. So if they do hit you with Kurakara, it never mattered because then you just reset up next turn anyways and then your continuous and your field spell recur and you telly so it's pretty crazy and so that's what i've been doing a lot in testing is just holding noir effect as long as possible games two and three some people are maining kurakara but i mean like whatever uh, but games two and three i'm definitely just going to wait until you commit to the board because everything's going back to your deck anyway so it never really mattered um, that's just the way that i've been viewing the matchups lately uh, but overall, definitely a very consistent deck, a very good deck. I've definitely considered siding Vanity's Fiend just because it's super free to summon. And then even if Vanity's Fiend gets destroyed, it doesn't really matter. But you also have a lot of cards to protect it too. And Happy and Delicious. So Delicious is by battle and Happy is by card effect. So definitely really cool that you can just kind of sit on a pseudo towers as well. So just another option to consider for the sideboard. So moving into Branded, I think this deck's still really fun to play. And there's just so many different things that you can do now, especially with Quem in the deck. And then you also have the Nadir Servant to dump the Lulu to add a Fallen of Albaz. And then also in the end phase, summon a card Tija. So you get another way to play into your opponent's board. And then overall, just having the option to go first and play the Aqua Dolphin so you can check for Ash. I think the deck is still a very good contender into next format. You can play the new fusion that allows you to essentially expulsion anyway, but it's really up to you if you want to play that over things like Titanic Clad and your extract too. I just wanted another way to have something that's like bigger than most monsters, right? So I still like playing Titanic Clad and Branded overall. That's the video today. I do hope that you enjoy it. If you haven't already checked out my Discord, definitely go ahead and join. There's a lot of people in there playtesting every single day, and then you'll be able to interact with me on a daily basis. I really like to interact with my community and jump into voice calls and just really be able to answer any questions that anyone has about their deck building, their theory. It's really important to me to help everyone that I can. So I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And if you haven't already checked my Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, or if you want a coaching session over at Metify, definitely feel free to check those all out down in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I hope that everyone has a wonderful night. Thank you.